Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Blackstock. I am your host, and this is Adobe Live. Welcome. We are here with the talented Anna Persbrake from Sweden, and we are going to be working on day two of the boxing still life. Hi, Anna. How you doing? Hi. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing very, very well. Um, awesome. Just really quick, uh, don't miss our Adobe Express streams right before this stream. Tune in to learn how to implement the easy to use app into your workflow with Andrew Hawkrattle. Andrew's awesome, great personality, great artist, great instructor. So please don't miss those streams. Uh, quick shout out to the chat. We've got Wade moderating today. Wade, always great to have you here. Uh, Alessandra Lopez, Robert Winterberg, always good. Steve Festus, recognize you. So glad to have everybody here. Please let us know where you're coming from. I feel like a lot of these streams are so international. It's so much fun. Um, also, if you're watching on YouTube, hello, welcome. Also, you can come over to behance.net slash Adobe Live and watch us on here as well. Um, you can hop in the chat here. And today, it's day two. And we did Artist Spotlight in day one, but we're going to do Artist Spotlight again day two. So if you see the Artist Spotlight in the upper right-hand side of the chat, you can fill out the form, nominate somebody. It'll be awesome. So Anna, let's uh, show your work, introduce yourself, and then we can go over day one real quick and then uh, let us know what we're gonna do for day two. Absolutely. So hi everyone, um, I'm Anna and I'm a Swedish-based illustrator. Um, I studied uh, design at the Academy of Art and Design in Gothenburg. Um, I also studied illustration at RISTI uh, and before I started to freelance as an illustrator, I worked as a design assistant for a Swedish fashion company called Kappal, where I did mostly prints and patterns for kids' fashion. Um, I've also been an intern at Borås Tapeter, which is a Swedish wallpaper company in Sweden. Um, and actually, before I went into illustration and design, I worked as a social worker. So mm -hmm. um, I would describe my work as uh, dreamy and colorful, playful and soft. Uh, it doesn't have like a lot of sharp shapes. Um, and I think diversity is very important. And um, I, I work mostly in Photoshop, um, but I also started to explore um, After Effects because I, I like things moving and but it's a quite hard program to learn, but I'm, I'm yeah. getting there. <laughs> So um, the reason I did this one was because I wanted the um, little yellow dots to move. Uh, you'll see mm -hmm. it in, in the end here, uh, you know, to have them move in different directions. Uh, and this is actually um, a dream I had uh, about flowers in a burger. So I thought it was a fun idea <laughs> that I should do something with. Um, so I also have these. Um, oh, so this one. Uh, this is a gift for clients of the Closer and Closer, which is my agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a desktop and phone background um, for the clients so they can use. And it's um, it's my hometown, Bålänge, actually. So this is where I come from and where I live. So it doesn't have like the best reputation in Sweden. So yeah, I wanted to show it from a, from a different side and show all the, the good parts and focusing on the positive things. And also I have, let's see. Oh, so this was one of my, my favorite projects. Um, it's for an ice cream company called Hemglas. So they have this mm -hmm. blue little truck uh, driving around in different residential areas in Sweden and selling ice cream. So when I was a little kid, we used to buy ice cream every Friday <laughs> from this this truck. So this was a lovely commission to do. So this is for um, their summer calendar. Very awesome. I remember we were talking yeah. about that yesterday of how yeah. we, we also have the ice cream truck yeah. rolling around. It's so funny. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought it was like, uh, like we were the only ones who had that. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Smart, smart business idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's awesome. So and I am a big fan of ice cream. So yeah, I love this one. It was so much fun. And this is like actually um, Photoshop animated. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's, it's cool. There's so many elements going on, but um, they all work really well together. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you like to uh, so you can understand what I'm doing today as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I wanted to do some sports still life because uh, I heard that um, the sports industry is doing well still. So that's a good thing. So I thought, why not do something with sports? So I did this one. Uh, it's uh, the football theme. And I'm doing for the live stream, I'm doing the boxing uh, still life. So I figured we could just jump into that maybe. Yeah, and continue. let's do it. Yeah, let's yeah. let's go over real quick uh, what we did in day one so people can yeah. catch up. And then, yeah, let's, let's roll on to day two. Perfect. So this is the boxing still life that I'm working on. And yesterday I started with this one this is my sketch and i just like laid out the uh, all the colors um and i you know duplicated it and have this as some um, reference now it's really low in the opacity but something like this mm -hmm. um and i i blocked in all the colors um you can still see it in like in the boxing sack and the I'm not really sure how to uh, this, mouthpiece. but you have it in the mouth. Yeah. Mouthpiece, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or mouth, and the mouth guard. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good word, yeah. <laughs> so and today I will um start I have started rendering this one, this glove here. Yeah, it looks awesome. I yeah, love it. Finally seeing the purple rendered as well. Yeah. And also I added the light and uh, the lightning as well. Uh oh, nice. today. <laughs> Just so I could, you know, keep up with the, with the whole piece. Yeah, of course. So I just wanted to show you like what it's like when you do the the highlights, what it actually mm -hmm. does to the to the illustration. It really pops, I think. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so today I will just keep on uh, doing the rendering, see how far I come. Uh, I will also do like some shadowing and do these little, you know, tips and tricks that makes it pop. Um, yeah, so awesome. I think that's yeah yeah let's yeah let's get rolling yes. i know it's a lot of work <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> there's a lot of strokes it would be nice to you know um count how many strokes you do for the drawing. Well, yeah maybe um <laughs> maybe one day ai will do all the strokes for yeah you. <laughs> that would be awesome i'm not sure like maybe i don't want to know yeah i know it's <laughs> I'm the, <not> sure. <laughs> good thing bad thing yeah Oh no, this is really cool. I, I love I love work that uh, f for me really good work is something that when, you know when you step back, it all holds itself together. But when you get in close, there's so much more to see. Yeah, uh, I, I love all the detail in your work. Thank um, you so much. Because because your shapes are so simple um, and clean, it's really nice to see all of that hand, hand gesture, work, stroke, and the uh, in the artwork itself. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, nice contrast. Yeah, and I really like uh, enjoy doing these, like all these strokes. Um, it's kind mm -hmm. of meditative, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, it, it, it sets your work apart, you know, this yeah. is, uh, defines your style. Yeah, I think so. It's like I always been drawing like this kind of way, but it has been more, um, more like subtle like mm -hmm. now than it was earlier um, mm -hmm. but it's like it's a learning process i think you evolve all the time yeah you're always you're, you're always trying to make make your work better and um i i think especially with style it's it's ever evolving you know yeah. even famous artists successful artists you know even some you know with fine arts it's like it might even seem like they're doing the same thing over and over again but yeah. it's a it's evolving if you're paying attention if you're looking and eventually it's going to change you know as you get older yeah. as your your life changes and the way that you think changes your, yeah. your art kind of follows suit absolutely like because you're doing like a lot of characters mm -hmm. um, have you always been into doing like those kind of illustrations I've always been into character design that's something yeah. I've done. Um, since I was very little, um, usually a lot of monsters and yeah. scary things <laughs> for whatever reason. That's awesome. um, I've always loved uh, kind of movie magic, special effects, um, prosthetics. So mm -hmm. for a long time, I wanted to do uh, sculpture, um, which okay. I did. I did. I did some um, in school. Like but, big ones or like more yeah, tiny? Uh, I've done a few that are about two feet um, tall and I 
did how, study how like big is that like because like oh um, sorry um me, me yeah meters? i don't even i'm trying to think of like meters <laughs> it's it's less than a meter because a meter is okay. about three feet i think so okay um yeah um so you know probably uh, <laughs> pretty big then pretty actually a good a good size but yeah. um yeah it's just it's a lot of work and sculptures a very difficult uh place to make money and have a good job um mm -hmm. support a family so unless you you know kind of turn that into uh, 3d modeling um or you know ceramics um it's a place you could do it but yeah. uh sculpt sculpting for film and animation um traditionally um it's a pretty a pretty uh niche um job area there's not a lot of people that still do it i think you got companies yeah. like uh, leica that um, do stop motion animation i think those are those are good places that you can kind of still find that craft but yeah so i just kind of moved more into painting and, and drawing and um, yeah i love it it's cool but also i think it's like very like when you're doing 3d stuff like with clay or something Mm -hmm. uh, I think you understand also like understands like shape and in a different oh, way yeah. when you or like if you're just doing like illustration or drawing. So yep, I, I think definitely. it's really good. Yeah, it's because you're trying to replicate a 3D form in some way, yeah. you know, like what you're doing right now. It's like you're building volume and shape and lighting. Yeah. So <laughs> the better you understand those things. Um, you know, the more success you're going to have, if that's what mm -hmm. you're trying to do, you know, uh, for what I do, because I do it for entertainment and for mostly 3D um, or, you know, and it's that's mm -hmm. that's the objective is to try to kind of replicate that. Yeah. Um, Robert uh, Wenerberg was wondering if you had a chance to look up Maddie's uh, brushes. Oh, not yet. That we were mentioning. Not yet. OK, yeah. Well, but, I, but I've been thinking about it today, actually. And I will do it. Yeah. It's, it will be Was done. it Ma Maddie's, Maddie's brushes? I think, yeah, it's M-A-D-D-Y. I believe uh, Wade had a link, I think. I can, we can send it to you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, Alessandra totally Lopez. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Alessandra Lopez says, I really love your style. Oh, thank um, you. That makes me so happy. Yeah, she uh, loves the color palette. Yeah, thank you so much. It is kind of a unique color palette, especially this one. It's, um, it is yeah. nice color combinations. I think it's the a, lilac and the, the deep it's red a, is not like a very common yeah. uh, combo. But I think they look so good together. Oh, it's really cool. And also like pink and reds as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that. So with um, a lot of your work, is it um, when you get commissioned or uh, do freelance work, is it mm -hmm. usually through for marketing and advertising or what kind of what do you usually do your work um, for? I mostly done. Or... Uh, I mostly done work for like editorial, actually. Editorial. Yeah. Uh, but I would love to do more, uh, more advertising and, mm -hmm. and packaging and that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I mean, your work is very well suited um for those things yeah thank you but it would yeah it would be awesome and i'm i think just like i'm open to to the most things um mm -hmm. and um i also done illustrations for um a children's book which mm -hmm. oh, it, that was really fun too actually um did you uh for a book that was published or yeah yeah Okay, um, it was to... like for for songs and rhymes and stuff. Okay, uh, so cool. I did like for I think it was four illustrations. We were mm -hmm. like several illustrators for that book. Right, so it was I a did, compilation. Uh, yeah, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, what's the uh, what's the book called? I'd love to um, look that up. Den lekande barnbokskammaren. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's, uh, so it's um uh, the like the 
playful uh, children's um, chamber book, maybe. Okay. Something we'll, we'll like figure, that. We'll figure yeah, it out. I have it on my website. We'll... Okay. Oh, okay. It's on your <laughs> yeah, website. Yeah. Okay, that's all and my Instagram as well. So you can, you can okay, check it out there. Okay. We'll Cheers. find it. We'll find yeah. it. Dude, what's this um, baby shark uh, song that you might be familiar, familiar with? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. And, Is that um, one that you illustrated? Yeah. And yes. it was also one, uh, I'm not sure, but like, the, you know, the um, the animal with all these spikes, hedgehog or uh, yeah. yeah, Yeah, hedgehog or a porcupine. Probably. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So that was one as well. And um, then it was like uh, for like every day of the week, uh, the children used to go like round in a circle. And then you mm -hmm. have like each each kid has um, has one. Um, what do you say? Like a weekday a uh -huh. name, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so bad to explain this, but um, yeah. <laughs> No, but, I mean, that makes yeah, sense. It's just uh, it's a, a it's a lot yeah, of like song that, song of the week. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, to get the days yeah. of the week. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the baby shark song is funny because uh, my <laughs> wife used to be a preschool teacher um, for five years, and I would hear that song back then, <laughs> yeah. and then all of a sudden, I don't know what I don't know if they bought the rights to it or what. I was like, can you <laughs> can you just make money off of children's songs because <laughs> yeah, I, I remember awesome. that song i was like oh this song's hilarious and then all of a sudden it's all over television and yeah. they've got a cartoon and a product yeah, line it, it's all yeah. over the place <laughs> yeah it's crazy but have you also done illustrations for like children's book or is it more for you know i i did once when i was very young i was about 19 did not know what I was doing. Um, but I did it. Uh, uh, a guy I went to school with, his mom uh, commissioned me to do a book with her. And I don't even know. I don't know. I think she independently published it. It was called Jemmy's Big Day. And it was about wow. this uh, kid, kid working, uh, kind of like saving up his money and doing chores uh, to buy a bicycle. Yeah. So, yeah, really kind of basic, cute little story. Um, but I don't know if I would show the work. <laughs> I feel like it's embarrassing just because it's no, so long I ago. And I just, yeah, I that doesn't exist online. So um, <laughs> maybe maybe one of these days I'll. It's a very conscious choice, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll embarrass myself and put it out there. But. Um, it's a good story. I just the artwork, you know, it's it's like you look at your stuff that you did twenty yeah. years ago and you're like, oh boy. Yeah, I, I totally understand. Because I did um a picture book for it was a silent book actually for my finals um on the university. Mm -hmm. Um and it was about uh, a giant who jumps into a lake and gets really, really small. Oh <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of it's, funny. Um, yeah and it's like an adventure but um it's just so interesting you can see like how you you uh you know develop your style and and like your growth i think mm -hmm. over the years yeah yeah it's so oh yeah, yeah it's, it's so like fun to see. it's not uh i'm not embarrassed to look at it i think it's more just um you know it's like you it's so hard these days because your online presence yeah really impacts Mm -hmm. your jobs and kind of how people perceive your art and so it does you do have to kind of think twice sometimes before putting stuff out there yeah like what do you uh, want to get hired for yeah um too. yeah i i i uh when i was going to community college i did a lot of fun fun projects and um did some pop-up books which were really fun wow yeah pop-up books that's, that's right. like the paper like when they come out yeah. of the book right yeah. yeah 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 so like we learned how to like wow. engineer all the different types of uh pop-up forms and that's really mechanics cool. that was really fun sounds hard too like how it's to figure hard. out how to yeah how to manage i i feel like the book is 
barely holding itself together at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see that one too. Yeah, I uh, uh, yeah, I believe the uh, pop up book was about as silly of a take as you possibly can make of cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. This gets very, even more interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty silly. Um, that's another one that I'd have to probably be careful. It was all. It was very cartoony and kind of. I don't think you yeah, would even know. It sounds it, fun know. to me. Yeah, it was very yeah. It was like a cooking show and there was a game show aspect to it and it was pretty silly. Cool. Uh Alessandra has a question for you. Yeah. She said, What is something in your journey career that you were surprised to learn or manage? Wow, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Can you just say it one more time? I... <laughs> yeah. What is something in your journey or career um, that you were surprised to learn or had to manage? Okay. So I think it's like, for me, I think it's more on a personal level, maybe. Um, I, I know I talked about it a bit yesterday. Um, but for me, it was like, because uh, I've been, you know, struggling with anxiety uh, and that kind of stuff. Mm hmm. And for me, it was like, I really learned that, um, that I won't let my fears stop me. It's like following my dreams and be true to myself, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really learned that if I do something that's scary, uh, but I do it anyway, because I want to do it, because it's like, I know it will bring me further. Mm -hmm. I have to do it anyway, like yeah. no matter how scary it is. For example, being here, I think this is super, <laughs> super scary. I do. Um, and like for yesterday, I couldn't eat before I went on the show uh, because I was so nervous. Right. But, right. Um, but I'm so glad I did. Like it's, you know, it's um, it makes you proud of yourself. Yeah. And it's I mean, that's yeah. how you grow, right? Um, yeah. What's that? There's a great um, uh, analogy or metaphor, but it's like the story of the, you know, the lobster and for the lobster to grow it, it gets uncomfortable first because it's outgrowing its protective shell mm -hmm. that's keeping it safe and so for it to grow it has to eject itself get itself out of its shell first and then grow yeah. a new one so for that time it it's vulnerable you know it's not safe anymore but it's the only way it can grow yeah. so and i think for us it's a lot it's you kind of as an artist you get to these plateaus or you get to these kind of safe spaces where you feel secure or um you kind of feel good in the way that you make art yeah but to get to that next level you kind of have to take those chances you might embarrass yourself or public speaking you know things oh, yes. that are really hard but once you start to do it and you start to get more comfortable you start to grow that shell again yeah. And eventually you're going to have to get rid of that shell and get a new one. But yeah, uh, and I also think it's... like, like for me, it's also been, I think my, um, like my development or my, my journey, you can kind of see it in my work, I think, mm -hmm. um, because earlier on, I did more, much more like desaturated, um, uh, illustrations. Uh, it was like darker stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and cause I got help cause I had uh, PTSD before. Mm -hmm. So when I got like the right treatment and started to feel better, um, I also started to do like different kinds of illustrations. So mm -hmm. like I'm doing pretty, you know, colorful, uh, I think happy illustrations. So yeah, yeah and I, th I think it's like has something to do like maybe with how I'm, I'm feeling or like, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's, it's like I've been thinking about it lately. Mm -hmm. how it have developed and yeah over the years yeah i mean oh i would i would definitely say your work is uh very joyful i mean even the you know the boxing knockout <laughs> you know but it's yeah. like beautiful stars and these big bright yeah. red gloves and because i just want yeah. it to be fun you know um, yeah no it's you can see there's a lightheartedness to it um, yeah
But yeah, it, it was a really good question. Mm -hmm. So after these boxing gloves, what would we be going on to next? Uh, so I, I figured I wanted to do a ballet illustration. Right, right. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So that more like a more, uh, you know, calm uh, approach. I want mm -hmm. this to have much more movement and uh, like explosion and this, you know, dizziness almost. Mm -hmm. And for the ballet, I want it to be more, you know, calm, uh, soft, uh, you know, all these beautiful lines that they have with their bodies mm -hmm. when they're dancing. So, yeah, more of that kind of stuff. Alessandra says, uh, thanks for sharing, Anna. And as an art therapist, I have clients who had oh. similar experiences. So that's super interesting. That's yeah, so cool. it is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, being able to turn to some type of creative outlet to kind of heal, heal yourself. And yeah, absolutely. It was just like, because yeah. when I, because um, I worked as a social worker before, um mm -hmm. and i i got burned out and like yeah, the only it's, thing it's that a I hard could, job yeah it is but important but it's yeah hard. extremely yeah. important but it's you t you take on a lot yeah uh, and i, I doesn't got like that filter and i'm pretty like introverted so mm -hmm. yeah it, it was too much for me um but like the only thing that i could do like that i could manage to do was to you know paint I was mm -hmm. doing like watercolor then, so um, that was like the only thing that I could could do. Uh, so I figured I should try and you know change my career, go from yeah. a really you know steady income uh, as a social worker. You, I mean, there's always jobs for a social right. worker, but um, as an you know artist or illustrator, it's um, much more. Uh, it's not that safe. If you know what I mean. What? <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah, heard of I, it before. Never thought yeah, of it. Yeah, what? Get out ever. of here. <laughs> yeah. Freelance illustrator. That's the most so, yeah. steady income you could possibly imagine. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, I figured like, because um, I knew that if I was going back, I, I would probably be miserable like the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I just needed to do a change. Yeah. And I just like, put all my eggs in one basket and went for it. Yeah. Which some, sometimes, I mean, you know, it's, we always try to tell people not to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, but sometimes yeah. that's what you have to do. I mean, yeah. you, you think about most, uh, successful, um, people in this world. It's, they, it's usually because they gave, you know, 110% towards something. Yeah. Um, and also like, I do have like the education, the social work, I will always have it. Like I will always, right. you know, have that knowledge and um, mm -hmm. that education. So I think it, it wasn't a waste or anything because I'm really happy um, that I went through all of that, even if it was super, super tough and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I learned a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's, like I said, I mean, you're, it seems like you have a very well-rounded experience. Um, yeah with your education and life experience and all those things kind of come into play when you're, when you're making art and mm -hmm. it's important having those experiences. Yeah. And I also think it's like super important to, to talk about that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like sometimes it feels like everyone had these, you know, perfect lives and everyone's happy all the time and no problems, you know? Yeah. But it's like it can be easier sometimes to be that yeah, way, right? Or pretend. Totally. So I think I'll just um, uh, leave it this uh, like this way and go okay. for the for the purple one. Yeah, let's do it. Just so you know what I'm what I'm doing here. <laughs> and are we using the same brushes that we were using yesterday, right? Could yeah, you yeah. Kind of just I point those like this... out again. Absolutely. So I have like, um, when I'm doing for a plain surface, um, I, cause it's like, um, like, you know, the white sheet when you start drawing, I'm super right. scared of that. So I just right. do some, you know, small textures, 
to make it less um, solid and you know just messing around so this is mm -hmm. a big square i think it's a cow's brush um mm -hmm. i'm not sure like in which category it is but okay. it's in there somewhere yeah and it also uses the kyle impasto brush so this is okay. more like this uh, it's a kind of a different structure or uh, texture but um yeah i really like them and for the for the rendering i always use uh, the gouache supreme brush mm -hmm. and i have that also like a little bit bigger uh and then when i do like the more of the detailed rendering um, I use this, the, I think it's a footlet, uh, it's also a cow's brush. I think it's under, um, the drawing box maybe, or okay. the dry media. Yeah. Uh, and it's, a I know four, there's so many. Yeah, there is. And they are all amazing, <laughs> yeah. but, um, uh, it's a four H I think it's called that too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wade has put the, the link to Kyle Webster's brushes. Perfect. So everybody wants them. to check those out yeah there's plenty of good ones yeah um, be pretty hard not to find one that you didn't like yeah and also like it comes um you know for, for every season i think it's just like comes some new ones mm -hmm. or they used to yeah. like every winter yeah they're constantly yeah there's kind of adding constantly adding yeah i think it's awesome well, it's kind of fun too because obviously you're not always going to be using all of these different brushes, but yeah. sometimes it's a nice way to break out of a funk or, you know, if, you, if you're having a creative block, Absolutely. just kind of start drawing with a different brush. Yeah, because I had like some different ones uh, when I started out. Um, and I think it's... Uh... So this is also the Kyle's Drawing Box pencil. Mm -hmm. And... I used to have like this one, the HB pencil, uh, mm -hmm. a lot, but it's more, it's much more tight, I think. Right. Than this one. Right. It's a bit of difference and it likes, yeah, I like this one better because it has mm -hmm. more grain and, uh, it isn't that uh, hard, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It kind of, it, it gives you a little more, uh, little more room to render. Um, your values. Yeah. So do you have anybody in your family um, that are artists or what kind of anybody around you that could have influenced you or is it something that just... Uh, you, you kind of just started doing or kind of knew that um, I'm like my my parents like I think they both uh, both are creatives like my mm -hmm. mother used to because I was dancing when I was uh, a kid okay and she did all these um you know show uh, dresses like we did this uh, Lion King once mm -hmm. and she made like the Simba dress like the uh, oh that's cool so yeah, she would make the, the costumes yeah yeah exactly the costumes yeah very cool. um and my dad he got this like he has really much of a like fantasies like he's also very creative and he used to tell me uh stories you know he came up with you know bedtime stories when i was mm -hmm. little and um, so yeah he has like a lot of imagination so i think i have like creativity from both of them but none mm -hmm. of them was like painting or drawing or anything right right yeah but I'm also like, I'm a, the only child. Uh, so for me, it was also like when I didn't have anything to do when my, I mean, my parents couldn't play with me all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, it's yeah. Hard. So then I just like, you know, I started drawing. So it, it's mm -hmm. always been my to go, you know, to do. Mm -hmm. And I always enjoyed it. Drawing and painting. Yeah, even with... Um... Even with a brother or sister, I feel like um, it can still be, you kind of <laughs> need a lot of your parents' attention, which can be hard sometimes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, two little boys that <laughs> it's in still a the case. Way, maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's like they can play together, but yeah, it's they still mm -hmm. want mommy and daddy to join in. Yeah. 
Yeah. How about you? Do you have like um, parents or do your, your siblings doing um, like anything creative as well? Yeah, I mean, my mom um, is creative. Um, mm -hmm. She didn't do, she was a, a nurse for 40 years, so she just retired. Um, but yeah, I mean, she could she could draw and paint. She always liked doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, my dad is uh, has a very like technical mind, mm -hmm. so very much like almost an engineer's mind can like put anything, take anything apart and put it together again, kind of thing. But yeah. not not really uh, creative, really vivid imagination. But yeah. Um, but my brother, my brother um, was really creative. Um, and made a lot of uh, film, um, art, sculpture. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I think the, he had a lot, uh, a lot of influence on me growing up. And my uncle uh, was an artist, and then my my grandfather um, uh, was an illustrator as well. So mm -hmm. there's yeah, there's some creativity in the family, and yeah, um, I don't think anybody really. Uh, did it as a solid profession but there's enough around it and people you know love for animation and film and stuff that yeah it was cultivated nobody was nobody was looking at you cross-eyed being like what are you doing with your life so yeah that was good I had a lot of support yeah yeah that's important like but at least it makes it easier okay. makes it a lot easier yeah um I would, I feel like this day and age, it's a little bit, I think more people are supportive of, uh, creative professions, um, yeah. than they used to be, but it is, it's still really, it's risky and it's not being financially successful. Um, it's hard. It's a lot yeah. of work and you know, it's not, it's yes. not a nine to five. <laughs> no, it's not. It's much, much more than that. Yeah, but I think, like for me, um, I really love that it's not a nine to five job. Completely, yeah. it's, it's the best it's thing just, and the worst thing about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I, for me, it's just like the best things because I'm, mm -hmm. um, I can work like a Sunday, doesn't matter, and maybe mm -hmm. I, you know, I can maybe have had some uh, something else planned on a Wednesday, for example. And then right. I can just, you know, work on, on Sunday or I can just, you know, manage my own time and decide, be my kind of my own boss, kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. your client is your boss, but um, I can still like decide when uh, to draw and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Having having the flexibility um, yeah. with your schedule is exactly. can be pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. For me, it's, that's uh, worth a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. So now with the other items um, in this painting, mm -hmm. are they all going to be kind of rendered with the same fidelity? OK. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I was yeah, just curious. Will. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, you know, uh, for all my pieces, I work just like this, like mm -hmm. through the whole thing. So it takes some time. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too long. Yeah, I think uh, starting out in, in art school, that was big realization of uh doing doing foundation or like master copies or something with charcoal and like or trying to do yeah. photorealistic drawings yeah. it's like oh putting 50 hours in is pretty <laughs> normal for you know it's like yeah those first learning forever. how how much work you really have to put into something um to get it to a professional level that was mm -hmm. a bit of a surprise at first yeah and also you have to you know if you're working with like oils and it takes forever to dry oh that was the worst part yeah I know. especially if uh 
in in uh, San Francisco, um, sometimes it'd take longer because just the the air and it was okay. it was never really because the temperate you know the weather and yeah it just, it makes sense. sometimes it take yeah it's like oh my gosh. I can do this <laughs> layer and then I gotta yeah go do something else for the next two days yeah yeah they're still wet right mm -hmm. till this day <laughs> yeah uh, yeah Almost. I know and then they're like well if you don't wait it might crack down the line you're like oh good <laughs> I can just yeah. put all this time in and it'll just slowly ruin itself yeah that's what I love about you know digital illustration mm -hmm. you can just go for it and you can always change your mind yeah, that's it. Pretty well, easy. and you can even sure. change the colors, right? Even what you're working yeah. on. Okay, so I think I'll just leave it at this okay. uh, stage. Yeah, they're looking great. So maybe I'll go for the helmet this time. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Nuria says it's looking awesome, Anna. Oh, thank so, you, Nuria. No support there. That's awesome. Yeah, actually, a good time. It's, gosh, it's already been about forty minutes. Wow. Can't believe it. Time flies. Know, time is flying by. Uh, yeah. If you are just joining us, we are with Anna Persbrake from Sweden. She is a very talented uh, designer, illustrator and soon to be animator right <laughs> yeah, <I> hope so <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um baby and, steps. Uh, yeah baby steps she is working on day two of this boxing still life very cool um also today we are doing the artist spotlight this is day two we're doing two days of artist spotlight which is really awesome um so if you look at the chat on b.net slash adobe live in the top right corner it says artist spotlight there you can click on that and Fill out a form and nominate yourself or somebody else to be featured on the Artist Spotlight. And we are working on the headgear now. I like this yeah. tech. I do like this technique of kind of just blocking in this quick texture because I do yeah. know that feeling. It's it's after I block in all my colors. I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't I like the totally way the artwork looks. I just, yeah, it's just, and then thinking is like, oh my gosh, I have to render this whole thing. Um, yeah. It does kind of eases the tension, I guess, or yeah, lessens totally. the anxiety. Yeah. It's like a mind trick or something. It really is. Cause it's not, yeah. it's not really changing that much, but no. for whatever reason, it's, but it, it kind of helps better. you get started. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So Dave Arcade really uh, wants to know about Babe Ruth. And if you know anything about <laughs> Babe Ruth. Um, isn't that like a baseball player? It Have is a baseball anything? player. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is so much fun, Dave. I knew he would say something like this because um, <laughs> I was like on the podcast and um, he was uh, talking about Baby Ruth and I had or Babe Ruth. I have no idea uh, who that was. And I thought it was a, uh, a band, a rock band. So I checked it out like in <laughs> Spotify. And I was like, oh, this is pretty good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I told him and he was like, oh, my God, Anna, this is so much fun. This is not That's what funny. I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was super fun. What was the uh, what was the podcast or? Uh, it's the Closer and Closer podcast. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so they interview you know uh, artists and other creatives. Mm -hmm. So I think it's super a super good podcast. That everyone right should on. be listening to. Yeah. Yeah, Babe Ruth is definitely a American icon. It is, so you know who it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really. Everyone famous. knows without me. Yeah, yeah the Babe. Me. Yeah, the Home Run King. 
Yeah. Back when you could just drink and eat and smoke and play sports <laughs> at, the, at the same time. Wow. Yeah, because like it's baseball, right? Is this pretty big in America? Yeah, I mean, it's the it's uh, an American sport. I think baseball is probably one of those. You know, it's like American football and baseball, basketball. It's like, yeah, I think uh, because, you know, in, invented in America, well, at least, you know, for the most part. And so I think I think baseball is like, you know, they call it America's pastime. So I think that does have a big, big yeah. part in uh, American culture. And it's. It's probably one of the easiest sports to watch. You can kind of just hang out, you know, at the stadium. It's like you can watch, you cannot, you know. <laughs> it's like it's a it's such a it's like a slow moving sport. But then when stuff happens, it happens quick, you know. Yeah. But it's I would very, love to very go fun. To baseball game. Oh my gosh, baseball games are really fun. I I can't watch it on TV because I I get bored out of my mind. But I I love okay. going to I love going to the games. Like the energy. Uh, yeah it's just it's uh, fun there's it's yeah and being in a big stadium like that and um the fans are always really fun mm -hmm. because it is such a, a slow moving game that there's a lot of time to kind of talk to people or yell at people <laughs> i thought it was like a really fast fast game so it isn't it's slow no oh, no baseball can take forever because there's uh there's also no, um, there's no like cap on like that's So if, you know, if you're tied at the end of nine innings, it can just keep going until somebody scores. Yes. Yeah, so like, I mean, I, 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 I'm pretty sure it wouldn't do that. Like, you know, something would happen. They would either call a game and like come back to it or something. But I, gosh, yeah. I know recently there was one game that was really long, like, you know, six, seven hours. What? I think even That's, longer than that. Yeah, I'd have wow. to. Someone, someone looked that. That's up. crazy. Longest baseball game. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Dave. <laughs> See you next month. <laughs> Uh, Dave says, uh, you're the best. And he's so glad that you remembered. Yeah. I will never forget. <laughs> yeah. And Steve, Steve Festus is also right. Baseball is huge in Japan. Um, that is oh. the, that is their largest sport there. And wow. That's cool. Yeah. It's, uh, I can see that it's a uh, baseball and golf are the two, two big sports in Japan. Okay. I think they have uh, their second in golf courses to America, but you know, they're about, I think Japan can fit in Texas. So it's, it's a <laughs> lot of golf courses on not a lot yeah. of land. So now, do you usually try to keep the the values consistent, or um, are you ever kind of pushing objects back with darker values, or how do you usually balance it um, in the painting? Um, I always have like trouble understanding the like hue and value, like in mm -hmm. English. What's the difference? <laughs> um, so like value is usually. Um, is it from, dark and light from from black to white right okay. from like your darkest uh, shades to your lightest tints yeah and hue and so, is more of the tone like the right color, the the of. color right yeah. right um and your question was about <laughs> well because i know because you're 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 rendering um everything very similarly um yeah so do you find that you usually are just using color mostly to kind of have that separation in the composition or give it depth or um 
do you okay. do you have to use more value to kind of push objects back or forward yeah okay or... then, then i understand um so i use um you know darker because uh, i have like um for instance uh, sometimes i do it you know black and white to see mm -hmm. if the colors pop and here is um very similar and right. i really this isn't like a good thing because mm -hmm. it's um they're very very close to each other right um so probably uh, i may i might be able to you know darken this uh, pink one uh, just in the in the color or mm -hmm. it will just work out fine um when i'm rendering because i would have right. like this um maybe some light here to separate it from the from the star um so yeah i think i work mostly with no darks and lights uh, mm -hmm. in that regard to make it you know separated from each other yeah so it's like as you're rendering you're kind of making those decisions to kind of yeah help. yeah okay wade wade came up with the the longest baseball game <laughs> Uh, How long? The, the Texas Longhorns beat the Boston College Eagles 3-2. to two. It lasted seven hours and three minutes across 25 innings. <laughs> so, That's crazy. Regular baseball game is nine innings, so you can imagine two and a half times. I have so many questions for that game. Like, you know, <laughs> eating, toilet, you know, oh, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, most people leave at that point. But I don't know. College yeah. is pretty intense. Maybe the... But you know, the players, yeah. I mean, they have to go... Oh take a pee or, or something? well the so in the dugouts they have they have all that stuff they have access okay. to bathrooms and yeah lucky them yeah if you know i wouldn't say i mean i'm sure baseball players out there won't feel this way but you know it's not the most physically taxing sport <laughs> i mean that's why they can play so many games in a season um okay so and sometimes you're just sitting sitting in the dugout hanging out um, but obviously if you're on the field, if you're pitching, I think the pitcher and the catcher are the, the two that are, uh, your, your, your body's getting pretty beat up every day. Yeah. Cause one, you're just crouching, you know, the whole game and the other one, you can only, you can only, you can't even pitch a full game cause your arm, you know, you're pitching so fast and using so much of your energy that you can only pitch a few innings usually. Yeah. Have you been playing um, baseball as well? Uh, no, I was terrible at baseball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did play when I was younger, but uh, I I had a hard time. Um, if I ever struck out, I was like, I have to wait how long to try to hit the ball again? <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's like this this is not I, this is not helping my uh, instant gratification. Yeah, um, it's like a yeah, long learning curve then. Yeah, well, it's a lot. It's very highly skill skill based, and yeah. um, like it's it's really it's like a very slow moving game. But also, right when the action happens, it's very fast. You know, the mm -hmm. pitch and the swing, and so it can be really frustrating. You know, if you're if you're not very good at hitting, or it's a sitting and waiting around for your turn again isn't. You oh know, my god, that's not my that's not my sport. No, me neither. Yeah. I I played uh, I played a lot of soccer and yeah uh, me too and american football so yeah soccer is really fun yeah it's pretty pretty incredible sport um i feel like it's the most um egalitarian like it's you know it's a lot of sports i think there's you know separation between uh you know the women's sports and the men's sports but i feel like with soccer it's anybody's game you know you don't have to be yeah. really tall you, you know you don't have to be really buff you don't you know it's yeah. really kind of skill and and speed and and intelligence yeah i think it was so much fun because i'm i'm pretty short um mm -hmm. so um yeah and it, it just doesn't really matter like no, you can use it to your anything. advantage too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They never saw me coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be a little bit quicker <laughs> on your feet and yeah. Lower lower center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Those slide tackles are a little bit easier to get. <laughs> totally. 
Totally. Do you ever do, um, do you ever have prints of these available of, of personal work or is there anything on your site or anywhere where people could uh, purchase any of your art? Um, I don't have a website, not yet anyway, mm -hmm. uh, but I would actually love to have. Um, but I think like if anyone wants to buy something from me, they can just contact me and we'll figure out a way. Okay. Yeah. So the best way would just be contact you and commission yeah. directly. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah, because I'm sure a lot of this stuff would look great in print. Yeah. Um, as far as your editorial work, has that all been for online or is anything printed in magazine um, or book form? Uh, mostly printed, actually. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. But also like they are both in, um, in printed versions and online. So, okay. Yeah. But it's like, it's really cool when you can see you know, your work physically, you can hold it in your hands. Oh, yeah. I think that's that's a pretty nice feeling. Yeah, it's hard with digital because, yeah, just yeah. viewing it on a screen can only have so much impact. And then, exactly. But it's yeah. easier with the colors, though. When you oh, do it, so much like, easier. Online. So much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you like, you know, very bright colors. Mm -hmm. It's a bit tricky when it's um, going in paper or oh definitely yeah I feel like nowadays printers are pretty smart and the you know before it, everything would have to be in CMYK settings and you kind of there's a lot of limitations yeah. and I mean there's still obviously uh, when you're using ink you can only do so much um, mm -hmm. but I don't think yeah you don't have to worry about as much of the settings on the artist's end as much anymore. Yeah. All right. Well, we are almost an hour wow. into the stream. So in about 30 minutes, we are going to do the artist spotlight, which is very exciting. It'll be day two of the artist spotlight. If you guys are on chat, you can go to artist spotlight tab in the top right corner there. Uh, click on that and you can nominate yourself or somebody else to be featured in the artist spotlight. It's a really fun way to look at other people's work and uh, get people to follow them and check out their stuff, especially people you might never have seen or run into. So uh, I love that. I love that feature here on Adobe Live. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, welcome. Hello. Um, please ask ask away. Our uh, moderators will get your questions in. And if you're b.net slash Adobe Live, you can come on Behance uh, and the chat here. Um, ask Anna any questions you might have um i love questions yeah we love questions yeah. <laughs> and it's it's day two we're doing a boxing still life um so lots of rendering it's looking really beautiful getting that awesome colored pencil uh cross hatching style and if you missed day one you could always check it in the behance live in the archives it will be replayable for you. So if you missed any part of day one, go back and check that out. Kind of catch up with us here. Uh, Diana Beltran Herrera says, Hey, Anna, looking amazing. Hello. Love seeing your process. Thank you.
Now, are you somebody that um, listens to music while you work? Do you watch stuff? Do you kind of do it in silence? What's your um, usual setup for working on a piece for a while? Uh, I mostly listen to music. Um, okay. So, and if I'm really, you know, tired, I can just listen to, you know, you know, bird songs like oh, okay. nature sounds yeah yeah, yeah. it's really you know kind of like um, ambient sounds relaxing. or nature yeah, yeah yeah kind of if i'm really tired uh, but mostly i listen to to music mm -hmm. do you kind of listen to anything or is it instrumental or do, i know sometimes um, people with like lyrics is almost distracting for them yeah like um if i listen to lyrics i doesn't really listen to the lyrics <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah 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 <laughs> um you're not I'm singing trying. along yeah yeah it's more like um you know i'm just hearing you know the sounds kind of mm -hmm. um but like i'm a big fan of cramping so and they are like mostly instrumental oh, okay um, kind of psychedelic uh, rock i think uh, okay. I'm describing. and yeah i also been listening a lot to uh, the tallest man on earth um, oh, listening to him that's... for like years like when he started yeah so my wife introduced me to to him yeah yeah we're actually from the same um place in sweden oh really yeah i didn't know that so i didn't even know he was cool. swedish <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is so yeah so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um diana has a question for you yeah. um she's wondering do you have a dream project that you would like to work on wow um like i have several green projects um tell us yeah i actually like i would love to do something from for adobe like mm -hmm. um that would be so so awesome they're um, listening <laughs> yeah i know i'm just like <laughs> what to say because i really really would love it because i've been using you know all the adobe uh, mm -hmm. programs for a really long time and right you know uh you know a dream would be like when you open up like Photoshop or you have this um, illustration or photo. Or yeah, the kind of the splash the artwork. art. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be, you know, you know, I would faint, I think, if I saw my stuff there. <laughs> All right. You put it out there. It's, yeah. It, it could happen. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, nothing's impossible. Hey, you're, you're yeah. on here working right now for Adobe. So. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. so, yeah, I would never, like, never, ever figured it, like I would do this just a couple of months mm -hmm. ago yeah it just it's kind of surreal actually um, yeah well it's been great having you on here okay, so and you're you. doing awesome you're a really good host as well thank oh you. thank you yeah it's you're easy to talk to and like the That's community good. is so nice yeah everybody's usually really great and uh yeah lots of great questions it's nice having people from all over the world yeah um, i feel like that helps a lot as well yeah it's so cool so uh dave arcade what's i don't know what the band's name is let's see kurangbin is that yeah. how you say it yeah Kurangbin. Okay. I, i'm not uh, really sure how to pronounce the name but i'm i'm saying Kurangbin. yeah yeah he's he says he says they're awesome anna um i love you even more now or i like you even more now <laughs> whoops is that freudian slip i don't know <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah they're they're really good and i was like when he told me about the baby baby ruth um i mean that's also like it's a kind of a rock um like the band that i found that i wasn't mm -hmm. meant to find but it mm -hmm. was like this um kind of you know also like psychedelic almost like desert rock you know oh i, mean? I like that kind of yeah and i really yeah. i love desert rock um yeah it's an interesting way to describe it yeah <laughs> I like it. I also like, I think I am um, also very influenced by, you know, the, the seasons because every, mm -hmm. every autumn I listen to jazz and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a more comfy uh, feeling. Yeah. There's kind of, there's always different moods for everything, right? It's not, yeah. you're not going to listen to the same music all yeah. the time. <laughs> and like me and my. Me and my boyfriend had um, uh, this uh, song, you know, I'm Walking on Sunshine. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of yeah. what song I'm I mean? Exactly. I leave the song to you <laughs> singing. <laughs> but um, uh, so that was like, 
a song like every time we were you know really happy or we just played it and you know sang and danced along and then it was like yeah it was like just just a lot of fun yeah that's nice <laughs> like the soundtrack of your life sometimes oh yeah oh yeah always always gotta have those few songs that uh kind of get you through those really either really happy times or yeah. not so happy times yeah but yeah, I'm a big, um, I, I tend to watch a lot of just movies or things in the background. And it's funny, too, because it's almost the same where I'm not really paying attention. It's almost yeah. like um, just having somebody talking or I don't know. It's like a, a weird, it's a distraction that helps me focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, like podcasts i also been listening to than that yes um, definitely and for, podcasts and for me it's like because i've been so insecure about my english uh, to mm -hmm. talk english and i haven't which been, you like, shouldn't be because yeah, you, you speak english very well <laughs> oh, thank you but it's like i've been so you know nervous and so i've been listening to a lot of podcasts and also like reality shows just to mm -hmm. hear people have these like normal conversations right right so i can be more you know, learn more about them, the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what what uh, reality shows are you watching? <laughs> I'm not sure. I you. We won't, we won't, we won't talk oh, about them. Yeah. No, but it's like, um, you know, this is like also, you know, it is some, um, you know, Survivor. Yes. I watch it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That Survivor. kind of stuff. Like it's a classic. And yeah, it is. Oh, I mean, I feel like Survivor's been on for. Over 20 years, I think. Gosh, it's wow. been forever. Maybe that's like, because it's, um, it reminds of, um, you know, we have this program called Robinson. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost um, a survivor, but okay. I'm not really, yeah. But it's very close. I wonder if it's like uh, Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, uh, something like okay. that. Yeah. But I think it's uh, like helpful with the, with the language. Oh, yeah. I mean, just any kind of situational conversation or everyday conversation, because you can only learn so much from just, you know, kind of formal uh, education with or doing a, an app or program. Yeah. You kind of have to be around people or watch people in casual conversation because yeah. a lot of those words you learn they're like yeah nobody really uses that word or yeah. nobody really says that <laughs> phrase and so if you go you go and use it and everybody's like huh yeah but it, yeah, said, totally it, it said it in my app that i could say this <laughs> yeah i mean i have googled so many words and i just oh, you yeah. know hope i use them right sometimes well and i feel like the english language is constantly changing um, yeah. And there's so much input from so many different cultures. And mm -hmm. so the slang is constantly kind of evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Wade, our, our moderator, is saying, uh, oh, I like the idea of using podcasts to help with language skills. He's like, I need that for my English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But it's really good, actually. Uh, Jack Watson says uh, Adobe Live is the soundtrack of my days. Wow, so that's awesome. I think I think a lot of people on here, they yeah, they kind of just have the Adobe Live playing in the background and get to get to learn some things and learn about some yeah. new artists. And it's really it's really nice having a, a free platform that's accessible for everyone. Yeah, um, absolutely. And just seeing all different types of of professionals working. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really cool. And also outside of Adobe Live, uh, just on the Behance platform, if you have an account, a Behance account, you can live stream yourself. Um, you can use any kind of uh, third party uh, streaming service. I know OBS is a big one that people like to use. It's free to use, um, but it's pretty cool. So, you know, everybody out there, if you're watching this and you kind of just love this format. It's like, you can jump in on this. You can live stream as well, um, which is a cool way to, to kind of show your process. And who knows, people might be watching you and learning stuff from you. And 
um, eventually maybe you'll be on Adobe Live doing this with us. So. Yeah. Yeah, Fairy Fairy Utomo likes the OBS. That's I believe it's called the Open Broadcasting System. Not sure if I've got that right, but yeah. Um, it's really, really cool too. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, um, Anna. Um, I uh, think I got tipped about like, cause you can record your screen just for like you doing. Can, yeah, you can it record doesn't your have to screen. Be a screen, right? Just recording. Exactly. Your too. Yeah, you can yeah. record your screen, your audio. Um, you can broadcast, do live streaming, um, all kinds of things. And it's really cool cause you can set up a bunch of different screens, um, so you can have an intro screen and have a screen where you're just talking or one with okay. just your artwork or one with you with, you know, a window of you talking within your, your workspace. And it's all very customizable and really, yeah. really cool. Yeah, this is like, this is the first stream ever that I'm on. Yeah, this is the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're going to stream we'll every see. day now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but yeah, no, you knows? don't, you don't want it. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, you know, um, you don't necessarily make different work or, but sometimes your, um, your process can change a little bit when you're live or when you're yeah. uh, performing in front of other people. Yeah. It was so. like yesterday. I felt like I really wasn't like, I don't know what I'm doing. That kind mm -hmm. of feeling. Yeah, there's because you're you're so used to going at your own speed or yeah. kind of maybe you, you maybe you're someone that takes a lot of breaks or you know you're constantly um, doing other things with your computer multitasking. Yeah, um, yeah, and this is something you got to sit down for two hours and really just because I never talk in. when I draw. That's and for then, sure. Right, trying to to yeah. uh, have a conversation and and draw as well. Exactly, it's not easy. Yeah, it's a definite definite skill. Uh, Tilda Martinson says it's looking awesome. Oh, thanks, Tilda. So, yep. It was great seeing your artwork yesterday, Tilda. Yeah, she's really good. Oh yeah, that was, that was awesome. And I can see a lot of um, similarities in, in both of your work. I can see how uh, yeah. influence each other. Yeah, the kind of analog feeling. Mm -hmm. When I just like the uh, kind of taking it to that next step with a little bit of the, the animation and the motion graphics because it adds a lot. Someone yeah. coming to your website and they see that. Um, I think it just gives you another level um, as an artist yeah. and professional. Absolutely. I think it's just like, um, it's nice to broaden yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I really like to, you know, learn new stuff. But I was so intimidated by the After Effects. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like, you just have to try it and make you know some simple simple stuff and you yeah. you learn you know by doing well i think you're doing it right where you start out really small yeah. start out really simple um just start to understand kind of what everything does and don't don't yeah. get too complicated at first um, yeah because i think that's you, what you know oh sorry oh no i was just saying you're your work also, um, it helps with that because you have a lot of like big shapes and, and things that you can kind of move around and it, it, it already adds a lot, a lot to your work. Yeah. It's like, um, I just, you know, when I first opened, cause I had like this in mind that what I wanted to do, uh, in After Effects, but mm -hmm. when you're new to a program, you can't do everything because you're new. So right. that was kind of frustrating and I doesn't have the best patient. So <laughs> it's been um, a challenge. <laughs> yeah. 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 You kind of want to do all the things already. Absolutely. Or, you, know, you, you don't want to spend your time 
trying to find how this one button works for the next yeah. 20 minutes it's like yeah. you you want to make art and so but totally so yeah it's, if i some, so far like some, the flurger uh -huh. uh, the, the, the um the illustration i showed you in the intro mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the with the flowers in the burger if it was like you know pretty simple animated but it has like a purpose because i wanted it to you know move in different directions so that kind of helped me i think to learn the program to have this you know a purpose with what do i really want to learn this time in right. the program yeah you you kind of had an assignment for yourself yeah right off the bat which does help a lot and you can kind of you're looking for specific things you're not kind of mm -hmm. just trying it out or experimenting it's like okay this is what i want to do how do i how do i get there yeah uh paola salibi hopefully i say that right uh says that's amazing anna i love the texture so mm -hmm. much thank you Yeah, and as you can see, it is not easy achieving these textures. No, a lot time. of layering, <laughs> which is, yeah. I mean, it's its what makes it special, though. I think this is why the the artwork looks so great. Yeah, and it's a lot, you know, back and forth. Um, but um, I'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Anna and I were talking before uh, the stream and just letting her know and obviously everybody that watches this if this work uh doesn't get finished during the stream um anna wh where could we go to kind of see the finished piece if we don't get there uh, you can go to other behance um and it's just my my name you can search for it there or i will also post it on instagram uh, and okay. my website so perfect so you got yeah. you got three ways you know yes. if we if we can't get to the finish line today um i'm sure within the next week or so uh and i'll have it posted up on our website on instagram or behance profile so absolutely and like we were saying it's a good reason to come back and, and see see the beautiful artwork yeah I'm super curious of that Nadi, Nadi brush. Uh, yeah. So um, let's see. I think Robert just posted a link to it. And I have. I do artbymaddie.com. dot oh, com. Um, looks like uh, there's a lot of brushes on there. So yeah, I have to check it out. I love yeah, you'll have to brushes. check it out. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Robert. So yeah, I'm wondering, have, do, do you make brushes at all in Photoshop? No. This could be, I'm curious if, Maybe if I uh, <laughs> this could be a brush that you could make because you could, you know, this would kind of be one of those times where you, you make it specifically for uh, the type of work that you're doing. Yeah, um, that's not a bad idea, actually. It's something you could explore because I, yes, you know, absolutely. I think using somebody else's brush to kind of shorten that is cool, but it's, it's really awesome. Uh, when you kind of make your own, your own brush that you yeah. use, um, specific to your work, I think. Yeah, Have you done look, a lot of brushes? Look. I don't like do a lot of brushes and I, it's something that I've really wanted to sit down and do. Um, I've yeah. done it a few times, but I'm, I, I just, I, I don't know. I haven't sat down to do it, but it's something that's been on my plate that it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, illustrators and designers and concept artists that I love almost all have <laughs> their own brushes. So it's like, yeah. 
think I need to get on that boat. Yeah, I should try it out too, I think. Sounds well, interesting. I think, yeah, for you too, especially with this cross hatching and kind of yeah. maybe maybe it's not something that you can find somewhere else, but maybe it's something that you could uh, look into try to make yourself. Yeah. It's a it's a really good idea actually. Thank you. And I know there's and there's definitely um, some videos I know through Adobe Live as well that uh, kind of uh, good instruction on on how to make brushes in Photoshop. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out definitely. So we got about ten minutes, uh, just so you know, until we do the artist spotlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember there was um, there is a um, kind of like a collective uh, called Trojan Horse was Unicorn. Um, it's referred to as THU, and it's a collective of uh, concept artists and illustrators. And I believe it was um, started in Portugal. Um, they hold they hold a festival every year, um, but they also do these really cool uh, Sony Talent League. Uh, contests um, and I think you have to be under 25 you know it's mostly for students um, mm -hmm. and I remember the winner I think the winner last year um, they made a, an, an app called to gather like almost like together and yeah. to gather um, and what it was is you could take any type of thing that you collected like a leaf or a stick or a rock or a blade of grass or packaging or, and you could scan it into this program and it would create a brush for you. Wow. For, and then that would also, you could share with others. And so it was kind of became this place where people could start making these kind of unique brushes with found objects. That's really cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, really cool idea. I think it's out there. To, to gather, I might be wrong together. with all of it, but it's a really sure cool name, actually. Yeah, really, uh, really smart. Yeah. Uh, Steve Steve Fess is uh, saying Paul Tranny, uh, who's someone that's uh, on Adobe Live. Uh, showed how to make PS brushes once. So I made a brush using just a pick of my friend's head, then made him a funny <laughs> birthday card. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best idea ever. Yeah, you really I can make that. them out of anything. Yeah. It's and uh, Wade is saying that uh, Kyle Webster, he's, he's also done a, uh, a few sessions. So that's probably one you yeah. want to watch, right? I mean, the master at uh, making Photoshop brushes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bliss Art was saying that he did it about two or three weeks ago. So I'm sure if you just look up Kyle's Kyle's name on the Adobe Live Archive, yeah. you'll be able to find it. I will definitely do that. Um, and Bliss Art is also saying that she usually makes brushes uh, in capture. So oh, it's another yeah. another good way to use that.
so would you say that most of the um, artwork that you have on your site now, um, are you using most of these brushes for that or yeah. is that kind of been the, yeah. I think it's like almost the only ones that I use. Okay. Uh, even if I have like several in here. Um, but yeah, those are my, my to go brushes. Gotcha. Um, so here's the, oh, uh, so here's the, the brush that I use for all my, um, my details. Uh, so it looks like this, but it's, this is too grainy for me. Uh, so okay. I must have tweaked it a bit. Um, I can just show you. So this is gotcha. too much for me. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, tweaked it. So it looked like this. Right. And so do you kind of tweak it and then save it? Yeah. And then move it into a new, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I use, if I need to have like really small details, I use this one. And it's a mechanical oh, wow. uh, pencil, also from mm -hmm. the Kyle's drawing box. Gotcha. Oh yeah, I used to do um, a lot of a lot of drawing with mechanical pencils. Yeah. <laughs> real real tight artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of you know black and white. Um, we you know this uh, micron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, microns. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like uh, zero point zero zero three. Oh yeah. Like the super oh, yeah. tiny ones. Yeah. Yep. I used to use uh, repeatographs, which even tiny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they're the metal tips. And uh, yeah, those ones you do like um, this crazy industrial engineering drawings. Yeah. But it's like, it's really, really nice, like enjoyable to have those really, really thin lines too. Mm -hmm. I, I love love microns i used to use those all the time yeah yeah me too All right. Well, when you are ready, we got about three minutes, so mm -hmm. um, find a stopping point and then we can switch over to the artist spotlight. Yeah, we can today's. Do. Yeah, if, if, if you've got a stopping point, it's fine. Well, cool. Mm -hmm. This is uh, day two. Uh, we got artist spotlight for the second day in a row, which is really awesome. Um, yeah, let's. Should I? Let's pull. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So this is Nuria Boch. Awesome. Um, she's an illustrator and animator. Um, That's beautiful. And I found, yeah, I found her, like her work a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I totally fell in love with her, like use of color. Yeah. Uh, her lines. Uh, it's just so well executed. Mm -hmm. uh, and also like she said really interesting shapes i think and all these and, you know blurry and the, blurry. you like you said the the line work um yeah it's it really stands out um yeah but it doesn't interfere at all um yeah and some really cool effects uh being used oh, that's yeah beautiful. and it's just so many details mm -hmm. and you know also like that's um, so cool sorry this yeah you know all the animations and you know where is it <laughs> i think it might be oh here it loading. is yeah it's my, it's my computer yeah but it's like it's so so nice and the use of light um i think mm -hmm. it's just incredible it's so dreamy um, very dreamy and, yes. yeah and like, that, i think I, there's some eyeballs the in the time. flowers there yeah yeah it's, it's amazing i can't imagine how much work this is like how many hours yeah it's a it's a really I mean, crazy blend between uh, a, a heavily graphic style yeah. but with a lot of rendering 
Yeah. So it still has a lot of this like 3D volume and form. Um, Absolutely. It's a really cool blend, a really cool style. Yeah. And like you said, there's so much going on with the colors, but it works really well. Yeah, it is. And also, like, I think her color palettes are also just so amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, even if there's a lot of color, it still, you know, works so well together. Yeah, I mean, and look I how much detail is super in there hard. The, yeah, it's extremely hard. Um, yeah. To have a proper balance, and especially with. Like I said, kind of all those graphic elements with a lot of a lot of that rendering being put in there. Yeah. Um, it's not being overdone and it's uh, really, really well balanced. Yeah. And I love these, you know, blobby mm -hmm. uh, things. I think it really um, makes the artwork pop and it kind of, you know, all, and also these, um, you know, lightning circles. So I'm not really sure what to call them. Uh, I which think ones? it just like this one oh yeah yeah and it really like it doesn't stand out but it's you know it really emphasizes the the mode of the illustration mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. and it also like helps your eye to wander through the illustration yeah that's cool yeah i, I think yeah these cool. are really these are really fun to look at yeah can you can you click on one of the ones that is there uh that moving an animate yeah can you go to the animation yeah yeah absolutely yeah, these are really cool yeah and just like the movement it's pretty like subtle but it's just you know on point yeah and just kind of like you said the the lighting is actually really incredible yeah um Look just at this the light, just the light moving around in her head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the apple kind of having this incredible. glowing. Yeah, um, it was really pretty. It has something more. Animated. Yeah, very very unique style. Yeah. It's it's just like it's so alive. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Yeah, that one's this one's really cool. The yeah. the way that ball is rendered. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I'm just it's curious if like that's this... 3D software that's being used there, or if it's all. I'm just... not really sure, actually. That's really cool. Because she can do magic. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what yeah. I mean. Like it just it, it looks kind of un otherworldly. Um, yeah, it's really I think unique. This one. I think she uses like for this one a 3D. Yeah, 3D. Okay. Pro, okay. 3D character exploration. Very cool. Oh yeah. And I do That's love that. I, I I always love that blend of um, kind of 2D shaders and mm -hmm. line work on top of 3D forms. So yeah. cool. Yeah, it's it's super cool. Yeah, I think her work is super inspiring. Oh, using the Nomad Sculpt. It's a very cool program on uh, the iPad. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I'm, it's really cool. No, never. Is that for very, uh, 3D or? Yes, yeah, so you can do uh, 3D with it. Um, and it's it's pretty powerful considering it's just on the iPad. Um, but yeah, um, if you're interested in kind of stepping into the 3D world, Nomad Sculpt is a really cool, uh, easy way to kind of get into it. Yeah. Wow, this one. I mean, Gosh, look at the yeah. movement and the composition. I want to see this thing this huge. Like, yeah, me blast too. It out on a wall. Yeah. Yeah, these colors are just so awesome. Yeah, I think she's just so good at um, composition. Mm hmm. Because it, like, With, your eye and, doesn't stop, it just keeps wandering. Um, there's so like much the going picture. on. It's so yeah. hard to maintain the composition, and it works yeah. really well. Just all these elements kind of taking your eye around. Yeah. So much fun to see the process as well, I think. Mm hmm. It's a good contrast. We'll have to have to get her on here. <laughs> yeah. This is really cool. Yeah, it's super cool. 
Yeah, I was everyone say, should I could check sit, it out. Sit and look at this, yeah, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. So many cool, like little gradations and gradients, yes. um, like little texture choices, and yeah. Yeah. So really yeah, so cool. this is her website, and you can also check her out on the Hans and um, her Instagram. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, awesome to have you your work on here, Nuria. Um, it's amazing. It's Boch, I think, is how you say it. Uh, yeah. B O J. Um, so yeah, incredible work. Uh, so vibrant. I uh, love the uh, mix of styles of graphic, 3D rendering, uh, kind of color explosions on each thing. But uh, well, awesome. All right. So go check out Nuria's work. And we are going to get back to the boxing still life. If you're just joining us, we are with Anna Persbrake from Sweden, talented illustrator, designer. Um, and we are on day two. We've got about 15 minutes left uh, before we start wrapping up. So don't think we're going to get to the finish line here, but it will be posted soon afterwards, um, either on Anna's Instagram or Behance website, mm. all the things. So please, please check back in. And if you Maybe missed I day should. one, you can go check it out uh, on the replay. No, go ahead. No, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just saying, because like the time really flies. So it does. Um, yeah. So I might just show you um, some of my shadings, maybe. Yeah. Um, no, and awesome. how I, uh, you know, uh, used to think about that one. So yeah, whatever else I'm, you want to show us, please. Yeah. So when I'm shading, I I think I'll do this to one solid layer, or like in a group. Mm hmm. Um. And then I'll just have a flipping mask on top of it and okay. have that one as a multiply. So I usually usually have the purple color for my for my shadings. Um because I think it just works really well. Mm -hmm. And here's like um sometimes I use this, this brush because I don't want my my um shadows to be harsh or anything. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm just go over with this one and it makes it just subtle shadings. Um, and sometimes I use this, let's see. So this is a different brush. Uh, this one is also a Kyle's okay. brush, uh, HB Pencil Pro, the 15 pixel. Okay. I have to because uh, it's kind of um, a bit softer than the 4H. Mm -hmm. And I think I will just start with this one a bit. So then I can have just, you know, a little bit sharper. So now, is this the kind of final touch of the rendering process for you for uh, this object? Yeah, or... this and and also I will have like when I've done all the shadings uh, for the whole piece, mm -hmm. um, I used to have like a top layer where I draw like uh, lines in different colors on the different objects just to oh, okay. know, really tie it together. Yeah, just some kind of final touches, details, highlights. Yeah, and. I mean, that seems to, because I have like a monochrome, when I'm doing the purple, it's all purple. When I do the red, it's kind of almost red. I have a little bit of yellow here, mm -hmm. uh, like more orange. Um, but otherwise, right. it's kind of monochrome. For the helmet mm -hmm. example, it's kind of the same color, but just mm -hmm. different hues. I got it right, hues. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you're doing it. No, you got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. yeah, you so, uh, yeah, the same, yeah, the same, same, same hue. Yeah. But um, so yeah, it is really I'll, subtle, but it it it's amazing how much just kind of that su subtle shading, and you have it on yeah. a multiply uh, layer, and that kind of allows yeah. the uh, the texture underneath to still shine through, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, exactly. So it just you know. Um, makes it pop more uh, mm -hmm. I can make a little more depth uh, right. and sometimes I also have this um a layer with um 
a soft light uh, with a yellow. Okay. I doesn't use it as much anymore, but sometimes. But you know, it just yeah makes a little. Um, it's mm -hmm. just a bit too much. Um, and you can just you can drag the opacity down. So it isn't much, but it, it makes something for it, I think. Yeah, it pops it out just a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these are the kind of the final details that really punch up a, you know, pun intended, punch up <laughs> a painting or yeah. a drawing. And it's there. It's really important. I mean, it can kind of these I think these are the, the things that um, as you get better and as a professional, you you know how to add it because. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people, especially digitally, um, will go too far or try to render mm -hmm. too much um, and it'll start to take away um, from what they've made. So it is like, I, I think that's why I like the way that you build values because it, it really allows you to see uh, when to pull back or, or when to keep pushing. Yeah. And sometimes it's nice just like... little drop shadows. I like yeah. That. So, and just, you know, I, I don't want it to be too much. Um, mm -hmm. This is might be too much. Sometimes you just see it like, if you have it really close, it doesn't, you know, seem to be doing much. Um, mm -hmm. but when you zoom out, you can just see it. Yeah, it is, it is there. So. Yeah, so those, those small little details, I think, that yeah. kind of separate the piece, make it better. Exactly. So I'll just do the same for, for that one. Because that's like, it's behind the helmet. So mm -hmm. what did I do now? Oh. <laughs> Layer, layers getting a little, yeah. little complicated. So I just do this one more time. Very Utomo's on his way out. Oh, so. got to go to college tomorrow. Well, have fun at college. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, yeah, Fairy. It's always thanks. good seeing you over here. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see this art in uh, some kind of storybook. Um, it is kind of perfect for it. Thank you. Yeah, it's crazy how much this is already uh, changing the piece, just having these few yeah. little uh, cast shadows and it really, really pops out the gloves. Yeah. This is like the part where I really think it, you know, because um, sometimes it feels like I don't know what I'm doing or like this doesn't look good, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I add the shadows and when I add the uh, small, you know, colored uh, strokes, it just makes the difference for me. Yeah, it's those final touches that kind of bring it all together. Yeah. Um, Well, and I think because you're also, like you were saying, are working very uh, monochromatic for the most part, mm -hmm. that's really, it really helps it at the end. Yeah. It really makes it stand out. So, for example, um, let's say I, I finished it all. So I'll just show you. Uh, like the the final things yeah. that I do. Um, so, for example, I, I do often do a layer on top, um, 
and I go back to my my brush that I kind of always use. Mm -hmm. The um, the four H, right? Yes. So, and then I just you know bring up a color like uh, a purple one, maybe. Mm -hmm. This is also, it isn't much that I'm doing, mm -hmm. but it kind of, um, you know, it just makes it come together. Yeah, um, it's um, it's kind of the elements that kind of harmonizes everything. Yeah. It's, it's I felt like um, when I did a lot of oil painting, um, we did a lot of that, it was kind of integrating all of those colors no matter where you know it's like okay you're doing a cool shadow well it doesn't just have to be one color in that shadow yeah you know it could be a bunch of different cool colors as long as it matches the value the hues could change right the color yeah. could change and in this you're kind of bringing some of those the the light purple that lilac the into the glove and naturally when we are looking at objects some of that color is going to bounce off and it's going to be reflected in especially something like a, yeah. a boxing glove um, but it's nice. It's subtle little details, but that's, these are the things that make the artwork really beautiful and stand yeah. out. And I think that's a really smart way to do it because they are very monochromatic is to kind of go in and just add those little touches. Yeah. Cause I think it's really, it really helps. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if you, um, look at this glove, but I just, you know, have some small, small touches. It is mm -hmm. a difference from from the other glove, I think. Yeah, yeah. And it is very subtle. Yeah, and it might not even be something that the viewer notices right away. Yeah, but it it changes without them even realizing exactly. it. Exactly. Hi, Erica. Got another another badge, another badge coming into the chat. Mm -hmm. Got the official Adobe peeps up in here. Awesome. Yeah, just the yeah, just that little bit of purple. Yeah. And um, I also used to have like when I've done all my lines and all my shadows and everything, I used to have like a top layer with um, with a texture. Mm -hmm. So for this one, this is um texture I made myself okay and this as well so I would just do it like um a raster I think oh sorry it was from <laughs> there so there you go oh cool and this one also I think it's called a raster or something else in English as mm -hmm. well I'm not really sure but I will drag it down to maybe 30 percent Mm -hmm. If I don't want it to be like take over. Right. And cool. for this one, it's a bit too much. So I'll just go and I take this brush and I will change the. Um, I'm not sure what it's called here, but I want to have it to be like as an eraser instead okay. of yeah. you know, drawing. Right, which I think you can also on the, the Mac keyboard, I think it's called a tilde button the key that's right below the escape key at least it is on my but i know there is a, a hot key that you can change your brush into an eraser yeah i didn't know it was a shortcut for that one as well yeah i just i learned it <laughs> i think a few months ago i was like what <laughs> how did i not know this that's awesome but it's it's really cool because it allows you to maintain the texture right it's yeah. not just a clean a clean eraser but so I thought that was really cool. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, the eraser will be a bit too, like, because I use the, where is it? Um, I'm not really sure where it is. It should be here somewhere. But it's kind of hard, like here it is, this one. Mm -hmm. The Kyle's eraser right. flat 100%. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit, it has too sharp edges for me when I'm doing just right. touch-ups. 
Right. So then I just use the a, a brush and you know just clean it up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, it it's pretty cool how much it adds um, yeah. to the piece. And I think we were talking about it earlier where it's, it really is, it really does kind of add that extra layer of analog feel because um, mm -hmm. it is kind of easy to fall into the, the digital trap where, you know, as uh, uh, Nuria's work, it's, it leans into the digital, right? Like yeah. it, you love that digital look about it. Yeah. Um, but with your work, it, it, it kind of pushes it even further into that realm of like, is this digital? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I love mm -hmm. that about it. And also sometimes, um, maybe I can just do, do it like this. Uh, Cause I used to, uh, what did I do now? Sorry. Should, oh, sorry. Um, because I like to also, you know, play with um, levels sometimes, mm -hmm. just to make it even pop more. Yeah. So it, it's like, it isn't much, but it does something for the piece. Yeah, definitely. I, so, I would say yeah. almost after every piece that I do, I definitely have adjustment layers afterwards yeah. just to give it that extra push. Yeah. It really helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this is kind of what it will looks like, except that's... I will, you know, finish up the backgrounds and I will do some more over here. Maybe, well, I would and... say, uh, pretty successful and, um, you got a lot done and not a lot of time. <laughs> and I know it, you think you're like, Oh, I'm going to have be able to get all this stuff, but man, it really yeah. does fly, fly by. Yeah, um, it does. Well, cool. Do you want to do just a, a quick recap for everybody and yeah, we'll start absolutely. wrapping up here? Yeah. So, yeah. So I was doing this uh, sports still life. Uh, I can just show you a couple of the steps that I've done. Um, so I started to, you know, block in all the colors, as you can see in the background, like for the boxing sack and the star and the mouth guard. What did you say? <laughs> Yeah, that's really right. Sure yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Mouth card. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just go in and like rendering with like cross hatching kind of technique. Um, and then I'll just, you know, uh, make some shadows with a multiply layer. Um, I'm doing, you know, some strokes with different. Um, let's see here. The different um, colors just to mm -hmm. tidy it up and makes it resonate with each, like with the different elements. Uh, and then I do like the, the texture. So you mm -hmm. can have like, do whatever texture you want. You can, you know, paint on a, on a paper, scan it in, uh, make some adjustments in Photoshop, bring it in and play around with, uh, with the blending modes. Yeah. And it's, you're right. Like there's so many different ways you can do it, but, yeah. um, yeah, this looks incredible. I think everybody's really excited to see it finished. So I, I'm sure that probably in the next week or so to be safe. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be able try to, to finish post it, it during the during the weekend. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. This is the end of day two doing the boxing still life with Anna Pirschbrake from Sweden. It's been so mm -hmm. great having you on here. Yeah, it's um, been lovely to, to be here. Oh my gosh, it's been so much fun. I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And and you did so well. Like I Thank I know you, you were nervous, but um, you did an incredible job. And uh, I can't so wait much. to see uh, the finished illustration. Um, tune into our new creative boot camp with Andrew Hawkrattle as he shows you how to express yourself by creating your first design in Adobe Express using templates and tools to level up your skills. Following the boot camp, join the second day of designing a boot. Book, book club can't talk book club app with fergie at noon pacific thank you so much everybody for coming by it's been a blast i uh, always love doing these adobe lives with everyone and meeting these new artists anna persbrake so so nice having yeah. you and you thank did you so an much. amazing job and we'll be seeing a lot more of your artwork soon so yeah. thank you everybody for coming by um have a great week yeah thank you bye-bye
Thank you.